Folks, we are talking about everybody's best friend, and we have a very special person in studio with a familiar face, Jackie. Jim Johnson is here from Loving Rest Pet Funeral Home in studio with us. And folks, if you haven't been out to this facility, uh, this is really an amazing place. Uh, after you visited with us previously, had a chance to drive by. It's one of those things where I'm driving along and you look over to your left, you go, oh, there it is. Yeah. And, and boom, you pulled in there and you, have such a great place but uh, what we're talking about are things that every pet owner has to deal with at some time afterlife is sometimes the best and sometimes the worst it gives people an opportunity to really say thank you and 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 have their pet with them forever if they choose cremation I went to a funeral yesterday and tucked under John Axwell's arm were the cremains of his pets just it it, it 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 literally tells me what I'm doing is the right thing and uh, loving rest took 21 years ago took afterlife pet care from some just deplorable scenarios and we introduced a pet transport bag versus garbage bags we introduced hearth floored human style cremators for pets and we'll see some pictures of those in a minute and we introduced a funeral chapel so people could come and actually say goodbye properly. And uh, we've been so well received. We service all but two veterinarian clinics in the Metro Des Moines and really? Ames area. Wow. Oh, I didn't realize that. So we are talking about loving rest. And where are you guys located? If you go down Southwest 9th, just to make this as easy as can be, <laughs> okay. go down Southwest 9th, and you'll come to a stop sign. And there's a sign that says loving rest, mm -hmm. 200 yards and point to the east. Now, it's not quite that simple. We put that sign up when we opened, and since then, we built a completely newer facility closer than the 200 yards. But you'll be looking at the new facility when you're at the stop sign. Okay. So we direct people there all the time. They come from all over the state because they've heard about us. And sometimes, on, on the sad side, they know what's offered in their area and they really do want a human type of cremation with a with a hearth floored and complete recovery of the cremains. We're kind of what everyone thinks they get. And, and at least for most people in the central Iowa area, we are what they get. Right. Uh, so obviously you saw a need having a passion for animals and well, pets. Uh, and you said, I want to make sure uh, what we consider our best friends and family members are taken care of even at the end of life. I didn't actually. I started with a partner in the very beginning. I had sold a construction company and was just eating everything in sight and without a purpose. So we started this. He was not meant to be self-employed, so within a year he had asked to kind of be bought out and, okay. and I did. And we just went forward full speed. I'm a little bit high strung and uh, we now, from that beginning little bitty chamber that we had, I have nine cremation chambers. Nine? Uh, nine. Now, why is that important? Why, why, why so many? Is well, it because of size? Is it because of necessity? What, what is that for? It's because of pure volume. People it's have volume. an expectation. Need. And we cannot fulfill people's expectation with one or two cremators. Pet goes in, pet comes out. Pet goes in, pet comes out. I don't care if the pet owner's standing there though we do have to make arrangements for that. It's a little awkward, but we do it so people can watch. We even do horses so people can watch. Horses? I, I didn't hear about that. Well, next, well, I'm coming back in a month. <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll talk more about I'm that. I'm going to bring the but horse. We're, we're showing the facilities. and without Look at the size of these. Without getting too graphic or too many into detail since it's early morning, but kind of tell us why you're different. Why what you're seeing before you is different than what you're going to experience in most other situations. Those are like human hearth floored cremators. Okay. Three small ones in the back. Um, they're not as deep as a human cremator because pets don't run seven feet long and right. people do. The big one in the front is the horse cremator. That would be for the horses. Yes, and I have a special forklift that Where in the picks world them up. did you find a horse uh, a cremator? My mentor told the company that builds these. He wanted one. They designed it together. He bought the first one. No way. I bought the second one. There are other 
animal incinerators where you pick a horse up, dangle it by a chain, and you drop it in the top of a giant kind of big thing. Um, but I'm not in that animal incinerator. Okay. I'm not at all interested in that. and I, I, I'm always torn between how deep I should go into kind of the dark side. I don't want to go there. I don't want to be that person. Right. Um, all I say is you need to have looked at the facility, looked at the equipment, and think that this is what you consider appropriate for your pet. Right. Okay. Con c providing the highest level of afterlife pet care is what we're talking about. And another big part of that you mentioned was the bags. Can we talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, open one of those up okay. because this is, um, it, and the thing that is, you know, one of the, the full disclosure here a while ago when when I lost one of my pets you were um, you were here and we were able to to gather one of these bags and utilize it and you're exactly right because when you have an animal that you love so much and so much vested in it and when you are transporting them from one place to another and you put them in a garbage bag that doesn't work doesn't work for me it doesn't work for mm. me at all and but show everybody the zippers okay. and everything on here and then because we do have an artist here. These are designed for a couple of things, and one, it's so gentle. This is a small one, but we have them for pets up to 200 pounds. <clears throat> Veterinarian clinic takes a pet, and they're always so gentle. Those vet techs are just they're so amazing. marvelous. And they pick up the pet, and they tuck it in here, sometimes with a little bit of a wrap or a blanket, and then they let the pet owner say goodbye, and quite often let the pet owner zip it shut. Mm -hmm. Now, what I promote and we see is that people can say their goodbyes. Of course, the little zipper sticking because there's nothing to actually hold the bag on. That's okay. We're tight. seeing uh, how you can also leave beautiful messages on I the I was bags. just going to have you write on here. Oh! <laughs> 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 That's an example of what you can do because you did bring in a marker to show that if you want to leave a piece of artwork, if you want to write a message, you're able to do that with these bags. You couldn't do that. On a garbage, on a bag? garbage bag? No, no, no way. So and, and that makes it, it, it personalizes it. And, and again, you talked about the closure, and I think that is something that is so important when it comes to your pet, is you have to have the closure. When, if and when the pet owner is allowed to zipper this shut, it's kind of in a little bit of a way saying goodbye. Mm -hmm. And it helps the veterinarian clinic because they and the pet owner have accepted the fact that now the bag has been zipped shut. Mm -hmm. I tell people, your pet's in God's lap in your heart and will wait for you forever. It's just, it's a wonderful business for me. Mm -hmm. I care about the pets, I care about the pet owners, I love my veterinarians. It's just a perfect business for me. And uh, I have the best of help, my drivers go out. We service from Mount Air to Eldora. Wow. And we go as far to the east as Oskaloosa and Grinnell. We don't go extra far to the west. Mm -hmm. We go to Earlham, and that's not extra far. But we put a lot of miles on vehicles, and on those far ones, we lose money. Mm. But I service pet owners. The whole money thing, I'm 66. I haven't figured out the answer to income yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, there's a calling there, and, and there's a passion there, and uh, this is the way that you're uh, expressing your passion, mm. and we appreciate that. Now, we, we, know we have the small bags there, and you, you mentioned the horses that uh, are able to be cremated too. When, let's go the other direction. Um, what about the smaller type animals? What, well, how small of an animal will you accept? I once did a tarantula. They have no skeletal structure. A tarantula? <laughs> I'm not really big on snakes, but I've done a lot of them. Really? And when the people come out with their snakes, it's just kind of like... I never would have thought that. Um, what do you care about? It's just... And those little tiny things with the spikes, I'm not sure what they're called, but they're the sharp. Hedgehogs? Is that it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I do guinea pigs all the time. We do lizards. You have to do them quite specially because they don't have really big skeletal structures and there's right. a lot going on inside of a cremator in terms of Heats air and, and things flame like and yeah. things. Mm -hmm. And so it's always a little bit, of a, even now, and I've done probably thousands of the exotics, it's always still a little novelty. You open the door and you just check and be sure that there's something in there. <laughs> well, everything's yeah. taken care of. Yeah. Right. Yes. But uh, all animals of all kinds are, are 
family members to us, but you're oh. able to take care of that. What I want to know is, uh, how do we reach you? Is it one of those we go through our vet in case something like this happens, or we just call you from our home, we stop on by, or all of those are 95% of our pets come from veterinarians. Okay. okay. That leaves five, and probably that 5% almost always come because the veterinarian told them to call us. They have a pet deceased at home. They, of course, you think of your veterinarian as your pet contact, right. and so you call up your vet and they say, call Jim at Loving Rest, and we will go to your home and pick it up. You can bring it out and pick it up. I had a girl bring me her pet at a quarter after midnight a couple of weeks ago. In fact, it was last week. Um, I don't take the phone to bed anymore, but uh, you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is check for your voicemails and right. find out that someone had some heartbreak and you call them back. And I call them first thing. I'm usually up early. If I've got a voicemail at 5.30, I call you back at 5.30. All right. So That's then you have the facility there. You have the building there. You have the cemetery uh, that is right there at the facility as well. And, uh, boy, talk about some fancy headstones that are there, Jackie. Really cool. Full-size horse. I saw that when we stopped by, uh, a monument of a horse that was there too. So uh, a sight to behold. Now, can people come and, and see your facility at any time? I wouldn't know. They just park and walk on down there. We have a sidewalk down into the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Can they come to the crematory? Yes. Absolutely. But when we leave, when my drivers head out, uh, really there's nobody there. My daughter's up in the office and she's there. And so yes, they can get a tour, but we prefer that they call. Okay. Um, but there is a chance for people to come out and, oh my goodness. and check it out because uh, yes. you have an open house coming up here. Right? We have an open house on May 11th okay. and we'll do some more promotion of that. Okay. The open house is just so people can be comfortable both with the quality of equipment and feel good about loving rest and that they're getting their pet back and why? Because we have enough equipment. And that's the other big part. I started with one little, they're called retort but the one little cremator, mm -hmm. and now we're up to eight functioning, and I've got another one up at, up at the house, standalone. After the fire, I was determined to have two facilities. Of course, that doesn't make perfect sense, but after our fire, four and a half years ago, I would never have all my eggs in one basket. Right. And so, I started with the intention of no one could ever do it better. So we put in a cemetery, we put in a horse retort, we have human chambers for, for people's pets. Uh, we got out of garbage bags. We have a very nice selection of urns. It, that was my philosophy. No one would ever do it better. You are giving, the, you're giving people the ability to treat their pet as the family member that they are. Well, they certainly are, and they all tell me that. They mm -hmm. cry. I know I'm not supposed to much, but... I'm in a business where hugs are actually quite appropriate. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit careful about that, but you can almost see people leaning in. They want someone to care. Right. And therefore, I'm the perfect fit. Loving rest cares. How there about you that? Go. All right. Uh, so we'll have more details on this uh, coming up, but we'll make sure and mark on our calendar to come visit you in May so everyone can see Good. how beautiful this facility is and what it means. And you know, I brought you both Easter candy. All right. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> this guy's thinking, I'm telling you. He's a sweet, sweet <laughs> man. And he's going to take care of you <laughs> as well if this situation should arise in your family. We're all thinking about our best friends and making sure they have the best life possible. Thank you for joining oh, us this morning, great Jim. Great